So today we're going to be reviewing possibly and literally the smallest PC we've ever had our hands on. This is the iBowman Mini PC by Asurix. We're going to be testing it, we're going to see how it works, and also answer the question, is this the right PC for you? Is this even a PC? So this was actually reviewed by one of our techs, Dahmer. He basically spent a couple of weeks testing it, transporting it, and taking it home with him, with his house outside of Metro Manila. And that's basically just to highlight the portability of the mini PC. Pero medyo mahiyain siya, so ako yung ginawa niyang host. But first, our usual disclaimer, Asurix did send us this review unit for free, and we are allowed to keep it. But of course, they do not have a say in the verdict of our review. Now, on to the video. So one thing that you possibly immediately noticed was the tasteful LED screen at the front of it. It can be configured as a stats monitoring screen, where you can see the CPU wattage, the usage, the... Uh, temperatures of the components and you can customize it a bit right below that is an rgb strip as well as the very aggressive and very sci-fi modern styling of the case itself so right from the get-go this isn't your usual mini pc that just looks like a black rectangle that looks like your router it is actually kind of nice before we get into the specs let's get to the aesthetics first and the build itself the build quality is very solid. It feels premium to the touch. I'm not so sure if the side panels are aluminum or a very hard plastic composite, but it is very hard. It's very sturdy. It doesn't have any flex in them. It feels expensive. It comes with a stand that you can use to mount it vertically like a PS5, but it also has a rubber feet on the side panel so you can orient it or you can mount it horizontally. Unfortunately, that's on the side of the drives and the RAM and not on the side of the CPU. So if you orient it horizontally, the CPU can still have airflow. Speaking of the side panel, the drive side is removable. Um, it's very easy actually. It's held by four magnets that you can just pop right off to reveal the drive slots and the RAM slots. So upgrading the drives and replacing the RAM is very easy. You don't have to do PC surgery just to upgrade your parts. So while we're there, let's look at the specs. It features a 12th gen Alder Lake N100 CPU, 16GB of DDR4 Sodium RAM, single channel, we'll talk about that later, 512GB of NVMe SSD and SATA M.2 expansion slot, we'll talk about that later. It comes with Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.2, dual gigabit LAN port, dual HDMI with 4K at 60Hz resolution, a 3.5 audio combo port, two USB 3.0, two USB 2.0, and of course the LCD screen. So let's talk about that RAM slot and the SSD slots. Well, yeah, having only one slot for the RAM is kind of a bummer. But with the performance that you're expecting from a PC this small, you wouldn't be needing the throughput advantages of a dual channel configuration for the RAM. But of course, yeah, you're going to be limited at the capacity selection. So while you can upgrade the RAM, you're going to have to replace the kit that's already there. Another puzzling thing, and we, we were actually very surprised with this, is the inclusion of a SATA M.2 drive slot. I don't know if there's a ton of those still lying around somewhere, but it's very puzzling how they didn't just make the second slot NVMe as well. You, you do, of course, still have an NVMe for your main drive. So I guess it's still, you know, upgradable. But again, you're going to have to replace it. You're not just going to add to it. So for the CPU, the N100, it's a 4-core, four 4-thread four CPU, which with our tests, it's a bit comparable to the 3200G from Ryzen, but of course, it's slower. And of course, it has a very, very low TDP of only 6 watts. 
for reference, the 3200G has a 65 watt TDP, so you can bet on the efficiency just from there. For cooling, it has a small copper heat pipe that is very reminiscent of those used in laptops, and it has a fairly small fan. So with all of that said, let's look at the performance. We're going to be flashing the graphs and the results for our benchmarking tools. It's basically what you'd expect from a PC this small. It only has a 6 watt TDP. Again, that's freaking 6 watts of power. So you shouldn't be expecting a lot of gaming happening here. But of course, we did test it with gaming. For Valorant, we did run it at 1080p and we managed to have very decent FPS and that's with, of course, the lowest settings. And even then, there were a couple of stutters. But if you have absolutely no choice and you just absolutely have to play Valorant, you can play Valorant here. For gaming, we apparently tested it with some emulators. So we kind of ran Bluestacks, an Android emulator, and I think some Switch emulators that we weren't able to make work. Of course, this isn't a gaming PC, but you can technically play some games here. Where it shines, however, is in office or productivity tasks. This is perfect for multitasking, for spreadsheets, you know, basic office stuff, as well as productivity and media consumption. One of the tests that we did was uh, run it as a Plex media server. So we tested it on our office network, just a gigabit network, and we had it serve 4K movie files. And it did pretty well. Having it on original quality, there wasn't a lot of stuttering, there wasn't any buffering. However, it did struggle a bit when we had it do step-down conversions. So from 4K to 1080p or 1440p, it's a feature on Plex to save on network bandwidth at the cost of CPU power. For that task, it did have stuttering, it did have buffering. So ultimately, who is this PC for? It is a PC in a very small form factor that does have some aesthetic bling to it. And of course, the flashy LCD screen. And admittedly, a bit of a low power in terms of performance. But quite frankly, its biggest selling point is its compact and very small footprint. For offices with limited tables or you just basically need a very clean, neat space, this is perfect. You can mount it vertically or horizontally. It won't take a lot of space on your desk. And even with the power being on the lower side, it can work as a specialty PC. You can run it as a NAS server. But of course, you'd have to have a separate enclosure for your hard drives. You can make it a Plex server, which with our tests is perfectly fine. We're actually planning to make it a Valheim game server. Again, its compact nature makes it perfect for those applications. Basically, PCs that are always on, which you just want to ignore after setting it up and not have to tinker around with it and think of where you're going to put it. So small update lang, we got the official pricing for this and it's actually just 10,000 pesos. Actually from 9,000 siya, it's a range, 9,000 to 10,000 pesos, depende siguro dun sa configurations niya. But even then, for 10,000 pesos for the performance and for the form factor for this, it's a very good deal. Admittedly, you could get a similar performance PC but I don't know if it would be this small and it would look this great. So if you need a basic PC for office, for school, yung sinasabi ng anak mo na kailangan niya sa school na pang projects, hindi niya kailangan ng 9800X3D and 4080 Super, this could do. Thank you for watching.